lift off. After a 10-month, 422-million-mile journey, NASA's Phoenix lander is less than an hour and a half away from touchdown on Mars. Phoenix is the first mission to target the red planet's northern plains, a region where scientists believe that large amounts of water exist just under the surface in the form of ice. And the presence of ice is intriguing to scientists because this is a region that once or still today, might be suitable for life. Hello everyone, I'm Gay Yi Hell. Welcome to Phoenix Mission Control at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. There is both excitement and tension in the air here today. That's because less than half of all the combined international missions that have attempted to land on Mars have succeeded. And the Phoenix team is well aware of those odds. As one NASA official put it, this is not a trip to ga grandma's for the weekend. The last few minutes to the surface will be the most stressful for the team. It's called EDL, Entry, Descent and Landing. But here at the lab, JPLers just call it seven minutes of terror. Let's see why. Phoenix is the first Mars down mission. It's the first mission that's going to try to land near the North Pole of Mars. And it's the first mission that's actually going to go try and reach out and touch water on the surface of another planet. Where there tends to be water, at least on Earth, there tends to be life. And so it's potentially a place where life could have existed on the planet in the past. The main purpose of EDL is to take a spacecraft that is traveling at 12,500 miles an hour and bring it to a screeching halt in a soft way in a very short amount of time. We enter the Martian atmosphere. We're 70 miles above the surface of Mars. And our lander is safely tucked inside what we call an aeroshell. Looks kind of like an ice cream cone, more or less. And on the front of it is this heat shield, this saucer-looking thing that has about a half inch of essentially what's cork on the front of it which is our heat shield. Now this is really special cork, and this cork is what's going to protect us from the violent atmospheric entry that we're about to experience. Friction really starts to build up on the spacecraft, and we use the friction when it uh, is flying through the atmosphere to our advantage to slow us down. From this point, we're going to decelerate from 12,500 miles an hour down to 900 miles an hour. The outside can get almost as hot as the surface of the sun. The temperature of the heat shield will reach 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But the inside doesn't get very hot. Uh, it probably gets about room temperature. There is this window of opportunity in within which we can deploy the parachute. If you fire the chute too early, the parachute itself could fail. The fabric and the stitching could just pull apart. And that would be bad. In the first 15 seconds after we deploy the parachute, we'll decelerate from 900 miles an hour to a relatively slow 250 miles an hour. We no longer need the heat shield to protect us from the force of atmospheric entry, so we jettison the heat shield, exposing for the first time our lander to the atmosphere of Mars. After the heat shield has been jettisoned and the legs are deployed, the next step is to have the radar system begin to detect how far Phoenix really is from the ground. We've lost 99% of our entry velocity. So we're 99% of the way to where we want to be. But that last 1%, as it always seems to be, is the tricky part. Now the spacecraft actually has to decide when it's going to get rid of its parachute. We separate from the lander going 125 miles an hour at roughly a kilometer above the surface of Mars, 3,200 feet. That's like taking two Empire State Buildings and stacking them on top of one another. That's when we separate from the back shell and we're now in free fall. It's a very scary moment. A lot has to happen in a very short amount of time. So it's in a free fall, but it's also trying to use all of its uh, actuators to make sure that it's in the right position to land. And then it has to light up its engines 
right itself and then, and then slowly slow itself down and touch down on the ground safely. Earth and Mars are so far apart that it takes over 10 minutes for a signal from Mars to get to Earth. And EDL itself is all over in a matter of seven minutes. So by the time we even hear from the lander that EDL has started, it'll already be over. We have to build large amounts of autonomy into the spacecraft so that it can land itself safely. EDL is this immense technically challenging problem it's about getting a spacecraft that's hurtling through deep space and using all this bag of tricks to somehow figure out how to get it down to the surface of Mars at zero miles an hour. It's this immensely exciting and challenging problem. And now we'll be monitoring EDL live from a number of locations besides Mission Control here in Pasadena. We have live cameras at our partner locations, Lockheed Martin Space Systems in Denver, Colorado. You can see there's half the flight team here. And also, uh, that's the University of Arizona right there. That's where the science team is at. During the next two hours, we'll also be talking with team members and monitoring all the key events. Our program is also being transmitted via the web at www.nasa.gov slash phoenix and speaking of the web we have our own blogger here at Mission Control JPL's Brent Shockley will be logging updates on the internet at www.nasa.gov slash phoenix blog right now we want to introduce you to some of the members of the Phoenix team beginning now with Robert Shotwell he is the voice of Mission Control tonight Robert is a project systems engineer at JPL. He's also our guide to be able to translate all the...